Hello, I'm going to do a quick introduction on ArcGIS Notebooks. This was part of a webinar um, that I wasn't able to get to, so I'm going to fill in those pieces here. So just a brief introduction before we get to a demo. So who might use um, Python ArcGIS Notebooks? So um, beginning coders, so that includes me. I like, I when I need to experiment with Python, it's nice for me to have it in ArcGIS Pro um, in a way that I can understand it and kind of consume it. Uh, ArcGIS Pro users, so um, I'm comfortable in ArcGIS Pro and my having my Python window right there um, just makes it more accessible to me. If you're using ArcGIS Online, um, you can use notebooks in ArcGIS Online. So you can leverage geoprocessing tools um, completely separate from having desktop software. And there's some things on ArcGIS Online um, that you can automate, some administrative tasks, as well as if you're using Enterprise um, and you have deployed the notebook server, then you also have access to these. Um, what are they? Really just a different way to use Python. So um, and a Python notebook in general, um, web application, so you're not using an IDE, you're using a web application. Um, so you can save and share notebooks with the Jupyter Notebook file extension, so that allows, again, pro users where they're comfortable to be able to bring in um, notebooks, Python scripts from other places. It's only using Python 3, so um, you may have to convert some things if you're using a version prior to that. You, again, can access those geoprocessing tools within ArcGIS Online. And sharing code is another way that I am comfortable, I'm more comfortable sharing code with a with something I can pull into ArcGIS Pro, which I'll show in a minute. Um, and using them in ArcGIS Online is a great extension of those. So when they're not for everybody, right? So over here on the left, you know, if you're a brand new coder, still practicing, still maybe not comfortable in IDE, then it's probably a great place for you. If you're a coding pro, um, you do not need those, except maybe to um, communicate to those of us who are not pros. If you want to replicate attribute rules, so um, in ArcGIS Online, you could schedule notebooks that can replicate those attribute rules that we don't have accessible to us. If you're using ArcGIS Enterprise and Portal, you can have those attribute rules applied at the database level. And so that wouldn't necessarily be a good use case for you. Automating things in ArcGIS Online would be one use. Um, but again, if you've got Portal, maybe that, and don't have a notebook server, then you wouldn't need or be able to access that. Cloud geoprocessing, again, being able to access some of that geoprocessing through just ArcGIS Online. And then the flip side of that, if you've got a license for ArcGIS Pro, might just be easier to do it there. Uh, lastly, you can sort of rent Ezra's GPU. If you've got some, even if you're in Pro and you've got some heavy processing to do, um, it takes credits, but you can use notebooks to leverage someone else's GPU. Um, but again, if you've got plenty of processing power, then that would not be a great use case for you. So with that, just really quickly, I kind of want to show where you can find them. Um, they show up in the catalog after you either drag and drop one in, or if you go to insert and new notebook. I'm going to open up Pro, and then we'll, we'll get to work on using one. So to dig into our demo today, what I have is an address data set that is used for a next generation 911 data set, as well as a CAD computer reader dispatch system. Um, that CAD system requires shapefiles in a local coordinate system, whereas our um, NG911 data is in geodatabases and in WGS84 because it is a statewide system. And obviously the requirements of each of those are not the same. So again, not being a coder, what I developed was model builder models that created those steps for me. Um, and so the way I started these, I believe, was if you've got some geoprocessing tools in your history, you can select those and then export those to a model. Um, so that's how I got started. 
made some tweaks as I needed to. Um, but my biggest hang up was that when I tried to field map, if I needed to make a change to a field map, it just, it reset every time. So that was when I knew I needed something different. I also could have combined all my models into one, but I liked to be able to kind of control which layer I was exporting at the time. So what I did was I had these models built and then I came up to the top here and said export to Python file. And then that just provided the Python that I could use to start combining these together and using them differently. So I'm going to go ahead oops, and just put a new notebook so I can throw those things in there. So right clicked over here and said new notebook. You can also do it up here once the notebook panel is open. So I want to go find that. Sorry, let me close my PowerPoint. Um, so here is my script. Um, not very pretty. A little bit scary to a non-coder. So what I'm going to do is just copy that. Go back to Pro. And I'm going to paste it all in the cell. So um, notebooks have separate cells that you can run one cell at a time, which is one thing that is nice. I know you can write uh, try statements and you can enter. You can have error, error statements as well. Um, but as a, as a new decoding person, it's nice to be able to just control which sections of code that I'm running. So I don't have time to actually go through the process, but what I did was one at a time, put those, converted the Python, the model builders to Python and put those in here. Um, and then here's where my field mapping is now more stable than it was in model builder. If I needed to make a change, I could do that right here. Um, and again, you can run, I'm not going to run this one right now, but you can run those one at a time to test them. So what I want to show then is what my final product was. So I threw each of those in, I tested them in chunks too. So you can, um, if you know, let's see, I want to get to a certain point, I can put it in a different cell. So let's say I want to do right before merge. I want to put those in a different cell. So I'm just going to cut those um, and then insert a cell above and paste that in there. I think I missed something, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave that. So now I've got two cells. I can run those independently. You can also insert put that one down here. Let's insert a cell above this one. So these are coding cells. The other types of cells, you can have um, headings. So it uses markdown. I'm just copy this. So we've got that. You do have to run, um, run these, I thought. Let's go. Um, oh, that's because I changed the wrong one. So this is markdown. Um, and if I hit run, then it will you have to hit run to get it to display the way to display the markdown code so um and then everything under that is collapsible so it's a really nice way to let's say we had another one you can make a different level again then run it and now you've got a heading um, just a way to clean up code a little bit um that is maybe more intuitive to non-coders so that's kind of how those function um, and i want to show you the end results we um, open this notebook so prior to having the notebook i you know i'd right click and execute each of these individually um, what it does is creates a folder for me with today's date that's one of the first things it does and then um, inside of each of those are the shape files that I need named correctly in the right schema in the right coordinate system. So that's the end result. What that looks like here, um, you know, we have our the default things we like to put in the top of our code. This is again just one cell because what I wanted in the end was just to be able to hit run once and have that have that go. Um, so it takes about 
um, five or 10 minutes to run. So I'm not going to run it now, but again, the end result is, is the shape files that I'm looking for. So to get from geoprocessing tools to monitor build alert to Python, to a Python notebook, um, that's what worked for me. Again, if you're a fear coder, you're gonna skip some of those steps. Um, but then it's also been a good way for the, the coders that I work with to write some code and then me be able to bring it into Pro and run it here where I'm comfortable and I can see the results of it. There are a lot more um, neat interactive things that you can use notebooks for. I just don't happen to do those in my day-to-day -day work. So I hope this was helpful. I hope that you try out notebooks um, and enjoy them. Thank you.